All right, so I'm going to show how to open up and disassemble this Acer Spin 3 model N16P9. So this is a SP315-51-757C. Okay, so first what you want to do is just remove all the screws from the bottom. So you just use a PH1. Let me zoom in a little bit more. There you go. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? Once you remove all those screws, what you want to do, be careful, open the computer gently. All right, since now the screws holding the hinges on the bottom are not holding them as well. Okay, so what I do is I get my fingernail along this gap here. You can use pry tools if you want, but what I do is I get my fingernails there, and then with my thumbs, I push on the palm rest, okay, just like that. All right, this is the easiest way. You don't want to push on the trackpad, so be careful and avoid that, okay? And then just go around, all right? So now that I got that, I'm gonna close the screen back, flip it over, all right? And then what I do is I pull, hold the cover up, and I push down with my thumb on this. Sometimes it doesn't pop out, so you might have to pry out the edges on the sides as well, just like this, okay? Going over to the other side, same thing, lift it up, push down with your thumb, see like that, okay? And then just go along and pry up the rest of it, all right? The back is a little tricky. You will have to pry this up as well, okay? So sorry, it's going out of view, but basically just go along the back and same thing, pry it along. Be careful with this fan thing, it's a little more fragile, so just go slowly. Okay, and there we go. Probably have to clean out the dust in here. It's a little bit dusty, but there we go. We got the bottom cover off. This does have a slot for an M.2, so we are going to be upgrading it to an M.2 SSD. Uh, let's see, you will need a special screw for this. So I don't know if you're doing this, I don't know where you'll find the screw, but yeah, you will need a special screw. I think it uses one of the smaller ones. Sometimes the SSDs will come with one. I got this Crucial P2 M.2 SSD, but this doesn't come with a screw. So I'll put a link to this uh, in the description below if you need it. Uh, let's see what kind of screw it uses just to see. Because sometimes they'll use a standard screw and sometimes they'll use one of these skinnier screws. So let me double check here. I think it, yeah, it uses one of the skinnier types. So this isn't a standard laptop screw. So I'm not sure what the dimensions of these are, but I think if you look for M.2 SSD screws, you'll, you'll find it. Okay, so now that we got that, I'm gonna go ahead and explain everything that's inside this computer, at least that is on the top. So this computer comes with a 2.5 inch SATA S uh, hard drive. You can change this to an SSD if you want, but since it has this dedicated M.2 PCIe NVMe slot, I am going to upgrade it to that SSD and I'll leave this in for storage. All right, the RAM is underneath this plastic flap. There's only one stick um, to take it out. So the battery, usually if you're going to mess with a bunch of stuff, you want to disconnect that first. But for the RAM and hard drive, you don't need to worry about it. Anyways, to get out the RAM, you just pull these two tabs to the side. It'll pop up at an angle, and then you can pull it out. So this is PC4 2400T, 8 gigs RAM. Okay, so if you wanted to change your RAM, they do have 16 gig sticks of this, but 8 gigs is plenty for most people. If you wanted to speed up your computer, I would suggest doing the SSD as your main upgrade. All right, so there we go. So we got the hard drive here. If you wanted to take the hard drive out, let me see if I can show you this, but you do have to flip this little latch up and then you can pull this tab out. They did put some adhesive here, so just be careful with that. You have to peel this out of the way. Okay, you don't want to crease this cable, so make sure when you're pulling it back that you don't put it up like at 90 degrees or you can damage it. All right, once you do that, flip up the latch for this one as well. Okay, and then you can pull this connector out as well. 
sorry, my hand's in the way. The adhesive is making this a little tough, but just be careful with that, okay? So now that you got those out, you should be able to just lift the hard drive out, just like this, okay? And if you need to replace it, these, this caddy thing, it just comes out. There's no screws at all, okay? You just pull that to the side. To remove this, you do have to remove the adhesive or peel this up from the adhesive, and then you can remove this connector. So to remove this connector, <clears throat> I don't pull on this part because you can yank the black plastic piece off. So what I do is I just pry it with my thumb and then you can get it out. So let me see if I can show you this. It's usually easier if you can go from the side here and then you can kind of pry it. You can use like pry tools or if you have a, your thumbnails kind of grown out, you can do that. But basically on the side here, as you can see, there's this edge that sticks up. So I just got my thumb under there and then I just pulled it up. And then you can do the same thing on the, other, on, the, on the other side, but you do have to take this rubber piece off and then you just get your fingernail underneath. Okay, just like that. And then you can pry it up. So there you can see the connectors out and then you can just pull it off. Okay, so that's how you would remove that. If you wanted to upgrade to an SSD, you can do that. Uh, I have a video on how you can clone your original hard drive to an SSD. If you need that video, uh, just let me know and I'll post it, I'll send it over to you. Okay, and then what else? So if you don't want to clone it, there is a way to also get the Windows 10 on a USB stick. If you need that as well, just let me know. I can send you that video as well, okay? So let me put this back in and put the latch back down, push that back in place. So my customer was telling me that this computer was running kind of slow and I think it's actually their hard drive causing problems. So technically I should remove this hard drive, but if it's going to be just used as a data drive, you can leave it in there. Uh, they said they probably won't be using storing much data so they didn't care the 500 gig ssd is enough so i'll probably end up removing it but just for now we'll leave it like that all right so for the battery if you want to disconnect it to work on things what you do is i just take my fingernails you can use some kind of tweezers or something and then you just wiggle the connector like this Okay, just keep wiggling it and it will pop out just like that. So usually after you remove the battery, you want to press and hold the, uh, the power button for about 15 seconds. Again, you want to open the computer slowly. Actually, is the power button on the side here? Okay, so this one, the power button is on the side. But for these laptops, usually if you leave the computer open or leave the computer screen closed, sometimes the power button won't do anything. So you sometimes it's better to just open it just in case. All right, so I'm holding the power button down just to drain any power. I don't really need to do this step because I'm not gonna do anything that's messing with that. Usually the power button, uh, holding it down and removing the battery, it's mostly important for the LCD connector here. Most everything else, like the fans, the wireless card, the, sorry, let me zoom back out. Okay, so there's the LCD connector if you didn't see it, but the fan connector, the wireless card, the DC jack, all right? Most of these things you don't need to remove uh, remove the battery to work on, uh, but it is safer to do that if you don't know what you're doing, then you can do that just in case. So there's the two USB ports here and the volume buttons as well as the power button are on this one board. So if for some reason your computer's not turning on, you might wanna check this board, might wanna replace that. There's a removable connector here, just like all the others. You got a speaker here and another speaker here. The speaker wire goes underneath the, the fan or the heat sink. So if you wanted to replace the speakers, you might have to remove this and then redo the thermal paste. The speaker connector comes out just like the battery connector. Just grab the two edges and then you kind of just wiggle it and keep wiggling and it pops out just like that, okay? You don't want to just yank it straight out because you can rip the connectors off the boards if you use too much force. All right, you also got the BIOS or the CMOS battery right here. So most of all this stuff is basically the same, so I'm not really going to go over everything. Um, let's take out the battery. I'll show you. There's these two screws here. 
so it's probably wedged underneath. So once you remove the two screws, then you can lift up from this side, okay, and then you can pull it forward. So there are little tabs that hook underneath. So if you need to replace the battery, the battery model number is here. Let's see if I can show this. AC14B8K. Okay, so that's the model number. I'm going to clean this off because it's kind of dusty. All right, so here you can see the keyboard connector, and then you got the keyboard backlight connector, and you got the trackpad or touchpad connector here. So the keyboard connector, let me show you because it's a different style. Hopefully you can actually see. All right, so the keyboard connector here to remove this, you do have to peel up this tape, but basically this has a pull back latch system. So you pull this forward and then it releases the connector. Since I'm not removing it, I'm gonna leave it in there, but just know that you have to pull this, these two tabs back. And then after that, you put the connector back in and then you pull the tabs back down and that will lock the cable in place, okay? All right, so I'm gonna put the battery back in. Make sure you put it the right way, okay? You have to put the bottom, oops, let me zoom back out. So you have to put the bottom back in first at an angle like this, okay? So that way the little tabs go in the place where they're supposed to. Push it down and then put the screws back in. All right, am I missing anything? The fan, you can remove the fan. There's two screws there. And to remove the connector, it's just like the battery connector and the speaker connector. So I'm not really gonna demonstrate that, but you just pinch it and then you just wiggle it and it'll pull out eventually. All right, let's see what's underneath this. Okay, so there's another cable under here. Okay, that cable is going to here. So this is where you get the USB ports and everything. So if you do need to replace this, you will have to take the speaker out and the fan. So I'm going to just take these screws out just to see how difficult or easy the fan is to lift up. There is all this adhesive on top that you will have to peel out as well. So I don't want to do that and mess up all the adhesive. But um, let's see here. Does removing those screws work? Okay. Yeah, removing those two screws does let the whole fan come up. So you only need to remove those and all the adhesive that's holding it down. There's a bunch of adhesive holding it down. This heat sink is pretty loose, so that's interesting. Be careful when lifting it up. You don't want to bend this heat pipe or the cooling's not gonna work properly anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back in. All right, wireless card just like every other model. I guess I'll show this, but because people constantly ask me how do they disconnect the wireless card cables even though every video I've done shows this so let me show you here they have this little rubbery foam thing on top that you will have to kind of peel up so I'm just gonna show one of the antennas actually yeah I'll show one of the antennas and then I'll put this back uh, if you want to remove the wireless card there's the one screw you just take it out and basically it will come up just like the stick of RAM, and then you can pull it back. So it comes up slightly at an angle, just like that, and then you can wiggle it and pull it back. Uh, you do want to remove the antenna cables first. So I'll show one of the antenna cables, but I'm gonna put this back. The antennas are kind of a pain to remove, so I don't really like removing them, but um, sometimes it's more difficult to put them back. Anyways, you just pull up on the tail, just like this, okay? and then it pops off just like that. So once you do that, to put it back, just line it up, all right? Make sure it's completely lined up. I rub my fingernail over the top. If it doesn't move, then I know that it's in place, and then you can push it back down, all right? Just like that, okay? And then we'll put this back on top. All right, so you got the DC jack connector here. Very easy to remove. Oops, sorry, let me zoom back out. All right, so DC jacks here, it comes out very easily. Same way to remove the connector, just like that. So if you need to replace the charge port, very simple. This design is pretty nice. Okay, uh, I'm not sure what this small connector is here. It's most likely for the webcam or something, the microphone in the screen. 
Okay, and I think that's all there is to this model. Uh, when you're done, make sure to plug the battery back in. Okay, so make sure you plug the battery back in. You just line it back up. Make sure you have it straight and then pull it back in. I'm going to clean up some dust first. And then just put the cover back on, snap all the clips back in place around the edges. And that's all you got to do. So I'm going to put the SSD in right now. I need to find a small screw to secure it in place, but we'll put the SSD in. All right. There's a little dust there, so let me get that out of the way. Actually, let me clean this up a little bit. All right, just like that. We'll slot the SSD in. It goes in slightly at an angle like that. Okay. And then we just push it back down. But let me get a screw first that will fit and that isn't too long. Let's see here. So the SSD screws are usually a bit wider as well. So they're, the top is a little bit wider. I do need to probably use a smaller screwdriver. Oh, actually, this one will work. Okay. So then just put the screw in. All right. And it holds itself in place just like that. All right, so that's pretty much all there is. Hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please like and subscribe so that others can find my videos. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.